Hi, my name is Seth Castile with Underwater Dogs. I've volunteered at animal shelters all over the country, and there are millions of pets looking for forever homes, and they need our help. One of the best ways we can help them is to take a better adoption picture. One picture saves a life. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to photograph dogs to help them find forever loving homes. When photographing dogs, I always recommend teaming up with a partner. This is my friend Allison, and this is our model, Stella. The reason why you team up with someone, it just helps make your job as a photographer much, much easier. For example, Allison here is responsible for handling Stella, keeping her on a lead, kind of keeping her calm, and making sure she's not jumping around, running off across the park, or etc. So it's a safety thing. She wants to keep Stella safe and allows me just to focus on taking the picture. So this is a, a 50 millimeter lens by Canon. And the reason I use this lens, it's very fast. It creates this very amazing uh, fairy tale effect of the dog's face. So imagine just a picture of the dog's face. Their eyes are in focus and everything in the background is kind of blurred out. It looks like a fairy tale. It's very appealing and it looks like a very uh, positive situation. Um, so again, when working with animal shelters and, and rescues, you know, some people would think that it's, it could be a potentially negative thing and it's really not. Um, so we always want to make sure that we, we make the pictures as positive as we possibly can. And one of the ways by, to do that is to make these dreamy pictures with this particular lens here. Obviously, it's important also to see what Stella looks like. You know, maybe is Stella small? Is she big? You know, does she have interesting markings? Does she have all four legs? You know, sometimes you just don't know. So certainly I recommend uh, taking some additional pictures that you can use online too. Here's Dee Dee. She's a little chihuahua also. Hi Dee Dee. You ready? Come over here Dee Dee. I think Dee Dee might be a lap dog. When working with dogs, it's important to really limit your number of distractions. For example, having all these people around, they're all distractions. Little Dee Dee here is interested in saying hello to you, to you, to you, even to the camera. So Dee Dee's kind of distracted, so we're gonna ask these friends to uh, take a hike for a minute. They can come back later. Now, with fewer people around, it's more likely Dee Dee is gonna be responding to me. We'll get a better picture that way. I'm always trying to engage with Dee Dee, so I'm either using some food, a treat, you know that Dee Dee's allowed to have, or a, uh, a squeaker toy, or some kind of noise, or I can make some kind of a visual sign. So I always want Dee Dee to try to look directly into the camera lens. So for example, hey Dee Dee, look. Dee Dee, look at this. So I'll see if I can engage with Dee Dee like this. Dee Dee's interested in the treat. And then I'll kind of pull the treat away, and then I'll put the squeaker right above my camera lens, see if Dee Dee will look right at me. Boom, there's a the picture. Good job, Dee Dee. Okay, you can have a treat now. Good job. You can also make a lot of weird noises, if that's your thing, to try to entice the dogs to engage with you. <laughs> so I have this little squeaker toy, you know, it's a little inside of a squeaker toy and you just squeak it. I always recommend don't squeak it when you first meet the dog. Wait until you have the perfect opportunity. The dog is in place, the dog is being patient, and then you squeak it and you might have that reaction. You might get a little head tilt or something like this. Definitely try it out. Sometimes you can bark like a dog, either a high-pitched or a low-pitched kind of bark and see how they respond to that. And if you give the dog a little bit of a treat, as they're eating the treat, they're gonna move their mouth a little bit and you might get some really interesting expressions that way. You ready, Stella? As you can see, I just took about 100 pictures, so I always joke, if you take enough pictures, at least one of them will turn out. This is Chubbs, our special needs chihuahua friend. He's helping us out today. Remember, when photographing dogs, you always want to be on their level. You don't want them looking up at you. You want them looking at you. So with Chubbs, for example, he's a tiny dog. So unless you're three inches tall, you're going to need to be on his level. So you're probably going to need to be laying in the dirt, on the ground, crawling through the mud. If crawling through the mud is not your thing, then I would recommend using a table, like this picnic table here. All we can do is sit down. We put Chubbs up here on the table. 
Uh, make sure you're still working with a partner to make sure Chubbs doesn't go diving off the table. But I can put Chubbs right here on this table. I am, I'm right at his eye line. I can take a picture of Chubbs and help him get out of here. So here we are meeting Kato, who's a, uh, a pit bull terrier friend. Ooh, Kato. So we're getting some good pictures of Kato. He's super friendly, he's giving kisses, um, but he can look a little bit tough. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna walk him around for a couple of minutes, you know, get him moving around, and that way he'll start panting a little bit, and panting can look like smiling. Thank you, Allison. Good, good, good. Excellent. So we had a dog that's super friendly, but looks kind of tough. Ran him around for a second, and now we got a nice smiling shot. So when you're working with all white dogs or all black dogs, you have to be very careful about the background. Uh, and this is a lot of times why I use a nice green background if I can, because I don't know too many green dogs. So it works out pretty good. Um, but if I was working with Stella in a different place, I would want to try to avoid putting her up against a white wall, for example. I'd like to show some kind of a contrast between Stella and the background. So she really stands out. I mean, the focus is about the dog. And if I was working with um, a black dog, I would want to be very careful about putting them against a, like a black wall. You can see in these examples that putting a black or white dog in the wrong setting can really hide what the dog looks like. By pulling the dog out of the shadows and into a bright setting with natural light, you can get some fantastic shots. To recap, the most important photo is the headshot, and especially the eyes, because the eyes are what makes a connection with potential adopters. Don't be afraid to get down low. Get on eye level with the dog and engage with toys, treats, and squeakers. Limit your distractions. Dogs are distracted by everything. You want to make sure your subject is focused on you. If you're working with a dog that looks kind of tough, try running him around in circles for a couple minutes. That way the dog will start panting and panting looks like smiling. My favorite backdrop is a green bush. If you put your dog in front of that green bush, you're going to have a nice natural green setting in the background with no distracting elements. It's the perfect photo. And finally, remember to be patient. Getting frustrated will never help. Sometimes you'll get your winning shot in a few seconds. Sometimes it may take you 20 minutes or longer. This experience should be positive for the pet and positive for you. Have fun and you're gonna get some great shots that will save lives. <laughs>